Hey guys, um, what's up today? I'm going to be showing you all how to make this little um, praying mantis pattern that I invented a little while ago that some friends of mine said I should video and post on YouTube. So, here we go. We start by taking a brown sheet of foam. This is tan because I'm going to use a darker brown later for some accenting on it. And we cut a V shape, not a V shape, a Z shape. I got that wrong. A Z shape for the two front claws. And you want one end to be smaller than the other because that end's going to be the claw. You want the thicker end to be the end that's connecting to the hook. And we need two of them. Next, we'll take two strands of silly legs, some people call them rubber legs, and you just tie like a regular granny knot in them, and you leave a little tail section, and that's what we're going to be using for all the rest of the legs. So, we're going to need four of these. These work really well for grasshopper patterns too, and other terrestrials, as they're really buggy, and that little knot makes for a perfect joint in the leg and it just wiggles and it's it's really good for fishing so we'll need four of them then you take a needle and some of more of that same color of foam that you used earlier for the claws and you stick the needle in your vise and you poke it up through the middle of the foam and we use that as a backbone for when we're making the extended body portion of the fly. Take your thread and stick it about oh, a couple millimeters from the end and begin your tying off there. Make sure you do really tight wraps to catch that thread. You can also tie, do a whip finish there if you want. I didn't, just for the sake of the video, but you can. Next, you take a thinner piece of dark, of a darker color. I'm doing brown for this praying mantis, so it's a darker chocolate brown. If you were doing green, then you just use a darker green or brown, but it does, it accents it better, and it just looks more realistic. Um, you begin tying off your segments, and make sure you do these nice and tight, because once you pull the neat, Pull it off the needle. The needle doesn't take enough that space anymore and it'll be looser. So do your um, segments back. Last segment always do slightly smaller than the falling ones just because it makes the end that end of the fly, the extended body, narrower. Clip the trim the ends so that they're slightly triangulated. And then there you go, you have your extended body. So now all the materials are ready. You need a size 12 hook in 2x length. Um, that's just the size I'm using. You can make stuff bigger, but whatever. Tan foam, your um, extended body, your silly legs. You need all four of them, remember. You can't do it with three. You gotta make sure you got four. And your two claws for the praying mantis. And that's it, other than your tying thread, which is obvious, duh. Um, I'm just using a lighter um, tan color. I'm not sure what denier it is, but it, is, it isn't very strong. But it does the job well. That's what I need it for. Too thick of a thread, and it makes a mess. Um, start in the middle, go to the back. And now for adding the segmented um, body, you take the hook out of the vise, you stab, stab it through um, the lighter colored section in the front, and that puts it on the hook. And from there, you go and tie it in onto your hook shank. That gives it more strength. Um, it puts it in line with the hook shank instead of being above it, which I just think is really cool and it helps out. It's better for the balance and everything. Um, and yeah, 
like I said, it looks cool. Make sure you put really tight wraps on this right here because you do not want that spinning. Sometimes, like, if a bluegill bites this, he might only bite the extended body, and if it's not tight, he could also pull off the extended body, and that wouldn't be good. Okay, I make wraps all the way to the eye of the hook and back in cross wraps to um, give something for the silly legs to hold on, as, um, as you see, you'll see, I don't use dubbing in this one. Some people find that weird and don't like that, but hey, be your own person. Silly legs. Um, make sure you put them right at the back of the fly because you've got six more pairs of legs. Two more of the, you've got six pairs, two more of the silly legs and two more of the claws. So you do want to make sure you've got space and that just helps with the segmentation later on. Make sure you give them tight, good wraps because, once again, those nasty little bluegills might pull them off if they're not good and tight on there. Make sure, remember and do both sides. I have occasionally tied a fly where I've forgotten to do the legs on the other side. Now it sounds stupid, but it's happened. But yeah, just make sure they're on there good. Um, You'll notice when I put the second pair of the silly legs that I put them facing backwards. I don't always do that. The second pair, sometimes I tie them in facing the eye of the hook so that they're spread out more. On this fly, um, especially for what I'm using for, for, I'm using it for pike, I'm moving it a lot more in the water. And with the legs spread out more, they get tangled up in the hook the hook gap and make the fly, fly flip over. That's why I put them facing back in this one. But if you're just twitching it, like for bass and bluegill, you might want to tie them in the opposite way I'm tying them in so that they face forward. It just gives it a more buggier profile while it's sitting still. I tie these in just a little bit past the original two pair because you still gotta make sure that you leave space for the segmentation and the last pair of foam claw legs. Um, as I said earlier, these silly legs, now that you've learned to tie the knot and everything, and it's, they're quite simple and everything, but they work really great on a whole bunch of other terrestrial patterns, um, like hoppers, I've used them for beetles and everything. So those silly legs with the knot in them, they're just really great, so just suggestions when you tie your flies sometimes just try a silly leg like that with the knot in it. it just it just works next silly leg goes on the other side um you gotta make you do have to make sure that these are really tightly wrapped on there otherwise um first of all they'll rotate second of all the fish will steal them and if your fly doesn't have any legs left it's got no wiggle left in the water and it makes it a whole lot less effective okay the foam legs make sure you put the bigger side up flat against the shank of the hook and we're going to wrap those so that they're um, horizontal we don't want them poking down into the water we want them flat that keeps the fly from flipping over it traps it to the surface film which is really good keeps all the rubber legs in the water keeps profile and everything just right and it's a little hard to tie these in because with the rubber legs and everything in the way um, it's harder to get good wraps but make sure those are nice and tight because sometimes um, foam legs like this can snap and get pulled out easily so just make sure they're secured and they're good Sometimes I would put in a drop of Zappa Gap or Super Glue just to tighten them down. Good. Now for the head, you use that extra strip of tan thread, not the dark color, just the tan. And you tie it with the long tag end facing out the front because that's what's actually going to go back and do all your segmentation. So you want that long. Trim the little butt end that's sticking out of the rest of the fly. Make sure you've got your wraps nice and tight because otherwise 
it, it just won't be good. Fold it back over, and for doing the eyes, you make sure you leave a little gap, as you see, and you just do really tight wraps, and it kind of mushrooms it up and makes the kind of little bubble that looks just like Primantis's big bubble eyes that it's got. Then you take your thread back behind the foam legs and right in front of your first pair of silly, your first pair of green silly legs, because that's where the first segment for the back is gonna happen. Make sure you get it in tight. Um, I do one loose wrap, then pull really tight on it, just to cinch it down, and then do more tight wraps. After you've done that, this is the hard part, it's working through all these silly legs. Get it all the way back past all the silly legs to the very base of the foam. Do a couple wraps just so it doesn't slide back into your silly legs. And then you'll fold it over on top of everything and just make sure you cinch them down good and tight because this is the last one you want the segmentation to hold because if it breaks all the rest of the segmentations could break too um just go slow and careful here you don't want to trap the silly legs in a, a wrap but you still want to get it nice and tight with good um um, tight wraps um, You'll notice I don't use a whip finisher for this fly Because the knot is being tied there Instead of at the eye of the hook It's extremely hard So what I do instead is I make a loop Bring the thread up and under Pull out about 4 or 5 inches of thread After bringing it under and making the loop And then I just snip it off and then I open the loop and I just start weaving the thread in and out through that loop, just around it. Maybe four or five, sometimes six times. And then you just cinch that down really tight and it'll hold your fly. It'll hold your fly pretty good. It's not as good as a whip finish, but it's extremely hard to do a whip finish with all those legs there. Um, you see I'm just trimming off the excess foam. If you're doing a bigger Primantis, don't do that because you can use that extra piece as the wings. This is a smaller Primantis, so it doesn't need the wings. And there you go. That's how you tie it. It's not super hard. Works well. I mean, it just looks cool.